Welcome back, Google Sheets nerds. In this video, we are going to figure out how to calculate the difference from each of these metrics that we have here and make it dynamic as well. To start, let's create a drop down menu for what we want to get the difference from. To do that, we can go to data, data validation, and let's reject the input. If it's not what we want, list from a range is fine. We can click on select data range, and let's select these three cells here. We either want to compare to the best, average, or worst, and click OK, save, and now in this drop down, we'll see best, average, or worst. Maybe let's make that bold, and uh, I'll deal with the formatting later. In the last video, we used choose the function choose. We're going to use that again. And again, it's reiteration of what we did before. Hopefully these, these functions, the few that we've used so far, but in great depth and detail, we're beginning to understand and recognize that there are a few functions that can do a lot of really cool things. In this cell right here, J5, we're going to choose which one of these values we want to compare based on what's in this drop-down menu. So let's go equals choose, and we've done this a little bit already. Now, what's our index? Our index is, let's start again with one, okay? We'll start with index one, comma. Our first choice is going to be our athlete's value minus the best value comma. Our next thing that we want to choose or we want to choose from is the athlete's value minus the average value or the athlete's difference from the average. And the final one that we might want to choose from is comma the athlete's value minus the worst value or their difference from the worst. And if we close the parentheses and click enter, now we have their difference. And since we have number one Option number one is our choice, which is the athlete value minus the best value. We see that they're 5.5, give or take, below the best. If we choose option number two instead, we notice that they're only one below the average. But this is not dynamic, and to make it dynamic, we're going to do the match like we did in the last video. So instead of number two, we'll say match, open parenthesis, we want to match whatever's in this cell, whatever we pick in our drop down menu, and lock in the J and the 4 with dollar signs, comma. We want to match that too, and let's select best average worst right here, these three cells, and put that dollar signs before the K4, the M, and the 4 to lock them in, comma 0. It has to be an exact match, and close the parentheses. So, what we're saying is we want to match whatever's in this drop down menu to or we want to find the column that corresponds with what's in this drop down menu and get the value for that. So when we're done with this formula, we can click enter. And there we go. The only other thing that I want to add here is in case we have a camp where there is no value in this cell, or we have a session where the athlete does not perform a test, I don't want there to be an error or a blank. So before this choose formula, we'll have an if statement. Go if, open parenthesis, if this equals quote quote or blank, if that does not exist, comma, blank. So if there is no value in this cell, let's make it blank. If not, comma, we'll do this choose thing. So if the athlete has a value, we'll do the choice. We can close the parentheses and click enter. And now we can copy this formula and paste it down. And now we can quickly see the athlete's difference from whatever we're comparing to. We're comparing to the average right now. If we want to compare it to the best, the values will change. And similarly, we're comparing it to athlete all time right now. If we want to compare it to the team best, the values will change. If we want to compare it to the position best, the values will change. Now, the last thing that I kind of want to do in this video is just some formatting stuff. Let's make it look, make this area look at least kind of nice. 
So let's do a few things here. And you might have your own personal preferences, but I'm spending this time to make this look a little bit nicer. I'm going to highlight all of these columns and just center align, vertically align, just so everything's the same. I don't necessarily necessarily like center alignment, but it is what it is. So let's change this to Varel around, both of those things. And now what I want to do is I want to merge these two cells together. And I want the athlete's picture to show up here too, because I think it'll look kind of cool. So we'll put an equal sign in the cell and just have it be equal to whatever picture we have in here and click enter. So those are their values and here's their difference from the best and here's where we select stuff. Now I want to deal with the formatting of this area. Just highlight all this stuff here. Format, alternating colors, and this is because I want colors to alternate a little bit. I don't want a header, and that's fine with me. Maybe I'll make the color even a little bit lighter by doing a custom adjustment. Maybe just a little bit lighter, and click Done. So that when I remove the grid lines from this, that I'll be able to distinguish rows from rows. Now, in this difference from area, I want to do some custom number formatting. We'll go to format, number. Oh, well, I already have my formats in here, so I'll show you how to set up custom number formatting. Custom number formats, you can use emojis, you can use symbols, uh, not symbols, but you can use some symbols um, if the font type is supported by Google Sheets. And I'll show you how to get the symbols that I want, which are an up arrow, a down arrow, and a, like it's just a dash if it's equal. I'm going to open up Microsoft Word on my computer and just open up a blank document. Go to Insert, Symbol, More Symbols, and you'll see I have my symbols here, but I believe that if you go to the font, Arial, and you go to geometric shapes. I think it's geometric shapes. Here's where the arrows are that I want to use. So I'm going to, actually all of them are here. So I'll insert the rectangle, I'll insert the up arrow, and I'll insert the down arrow, and click close. And it has to be Arial because Arial is supported by Google Sheets. You can't use wingdings or webdings or anything like that. Although, like, you could use um, emojis in certain instances. I'm going to copy all three of these symbols, okay? and I'm just going to paste them into Google Sheets. Now I have the symbols there, and when I highlight all the cells that I want to format in that way and go to Format, Number, More Formats, Custom Number Format, we can customize the number format. So let's start this from, from scratch. You have three number formats. The first is for positive numbers, the second is for negative numbers, and the third is for numbers that are equal to zero. You've, you have control over how each of those things are formatted. So I'm going to go with a quote sign and paste to paste in my symbols. For positive numbers, I want a quote sign up arrow, and I'll actually put it at the end, but I'll go 0.0 with a quote up arrow and then a semicolon segregates okay that's how you want to format positive numbers 0.0 just means a number a decimal then another number with whatever this is in quotes next to it instead of that up arrow we could say Adam and then it'll say Adam after the number whatever is in the quote will show up after the number for negative numbers again I'll just have 0.0 it'll and I'll do a quote and paste and remove the two symbols that I don't want and a down arrow and for the third which is zero semicolon to separate so we have positive numbers semicolon how we want to format negative numbers semicolon and I'm just going to do paste and remove the two symbols that I don't want because I don't want the zero value to show up I just want the symbol and if we click apply now we can see our numbers are formatted appropriately. Their body weight is equal to the position best, so there's nothing there. 
Um, their broad jump is 16 below the position best, so there's a down arrow and the below with one decimal. And we can change the font to be Varela around now, and we can kind of bold all this stuff. And the last part of this is we made this dynamic, right? We And I'll, I'll remove these symbols now. We made this dynamic so that we could pick any metric. One of the difficulties with that is that you don't know how many decimals you're going to want, and you don't know what the formatting is going to be that you want. And I advise knowing what you're going to want in this list and format each row appropriately. I made this dynamic so it could accommodate for all your needs, but for me, I'll, I know what I want to go in each of these cells, and I'll format each appropriately. And I'm going to go through that right now. So I'm going to start mine with body weight. I, I'm going to kind of go fitness category by fitness category. I'll do body weight. That's kind of general, and there really isn't a best or a worst. So I don't care. Um, Body weight will go body fat, which is more fitness oriented, and VO2 max, fitness oriented. Then we'll get into some speed stuff, so maybe 10 meter sprint, 20 meter sprint. And then we'll get into some power stuff, which might be CMJ average and broad jump. And then we'll get into some strength stuff, which might just be these numbers that are here. And I'm going to format these accordingly. So body fat, that's fine. VO2 max, that's fine. I need to change those numbers. So if you do see a drastic change, like these numbers end up being in like 40s to 70s, uh, don't, don't be surprised. And now, but for sprints, we can change this formatting. So let's go here and let's add a decimal. And let's go here and add a decimal. And we'll add them here as well, add a decimal. And the reason why I don't do everything at once is because when you have specific custom formatting, sometimes it screws, it, it adopts other things. But let's copy this and let's paste the formatting here because we know that this now will have two decimals if there's a difference. And broad jump, maybe we just want one decimal or no decimals. We can do the same here. So notice I just do the custom formatted ones separately when I remove decimals from them. And I'll do that the same here. Remove a decimal, and we'll do that across the board. Same thing here, remove a decimal. Same thing here, remove a decimal, and do that across the board. And maybe here I actually want one more. Or maybe not, I don't know. No, I think that's fine, one decimal is fine there. And that's it for this video. Hopefully it works. So we can go, let's see, what's their difference from average? Okay, we can see that pretty quickly. What's their difference from the worst? And we can see that pretty quickly and where they are the worst, which might be important. And if you haven't done so already, please take a moment to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you find this information helpful or if you find the video beneficial. I'd really appreciate that. That's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to... I guess finalize or finalize the top portion of this page or this part and then in future videos which will be some will be optional is we'll start creating scores and different things like that if you're interested in that and you can if you want to skip over those you can we're going to get into some historical fitness testing stuff after that but just stay tuned and continue to follow along and I'll help guide you for what you need to do and what you don't need to do to get what you want if you enjoyed the content, give it a like, and if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'm excited to see you in another video.